it's amazing to see a lot of the new faces and really amazing to see a lot of return faces that we haven't scared you away. Um, I want to give a shout out to all the volunteers for working so hard and uh, pulling things together and making it run. And also to our bloggers and press team for um, showing up and reviewing your polishes vendors and uh, enjoying all of the items that you have to present. And uh, I would also like to thank uh, Jen Knight for the amazing entertainment. Of course, I'm a little bit biased because she's my daughter. Um, and I just wanted to let you know that we're going to uh, get going with the speakers panel. So what we have is a few vendors who are going to come up and uh, give you a little bit of insight on their businesses. So we have Caitlin from Streets Ahead Style, who is a Canadian blogger, and she's going to um, run through our blogger, uh, our speakers panel, and present some questions to them on their business, how they got started, how they're enjoying it, how they're finding the indie beauty game has changed and evolved. And if you have any questions for any of our vendors, feel free to ask them. They would be more than happy to answer. So today we're going to be welcoming Sarah from Bees Knees Lacquer. And we're going to be welcoming Sammy of Cuter Cuticles. And Katie of Harlow and Company. And one of the girls, either Maggie or Lee, from Cleona Cosmetics. All amazing brands. And we are very happy to have them. So I hope that you will take a seat, either at the tables or up here, or at least pay attention to what they're having to say. And again, if you have any questions for them, uh, feel free to come up and ask your questions. I'd also like to remind you that we're doing our uh, silent auction and sales table again this year. The first year we did just an auction and we were able to raise nearly $2,000. And that was going to uh, Mount Sinai in Toronto at the Marvell Koffler Breast Care Centre. And this year we've added another recipient and that is the Rose of Sharon in Newmarket and they offer services for young mothers. And our very own Caitlin works for this non-profit organization and it's an amazing organization. And we've actually heard from one of our Indie Expo customers who was able to take advantage of their services several years ago and she had a lot of good things to say about their services. Um, so we have an auction over here for a Helmer. I'm sure you guys all know what that is and probably have multiples. So you get the Helmer, all of the contents in the Helmer, which is 50 plus polishes. A lot of them are one of a kinds, hard to find, um, PPUs, HHCs, things that you cannot buy anymore. There's several unicorn pea polishes in there. There's a stamping plate, there's other products. You also get over $200 in gift cards from our vendors who have donated gift cards. So this Helmer has a value of, if I could add, <laughs> uh, $250, $450, almost $500 in just the gift cards and the Helmer and that kind of stuff itself. So come on over and take a, a gander at what's in there. Look at the drawers, see what's in there, make your bid. The starting bid is $300. The first year it went for $800. So what you could do is you could go in on this bid with some of your friends, because there's 50 polishes in there and $200 in gift cards plus the Helmer. You can split that up, you can share. Um, you can take it home with you today, or if you need to be shipped, we would be more than happy to do that for you, and we will give you a gift card for the Helmer if you don't want to take this physical one. Um, there's also a bunch of other items we have donated from vendors and from PPU, and the polishes are $7 each straight up sale. There's no auction, you just buy it for $7 and walk away with it. There's a bunch of other items that are only $5 straight up sale, you walk away with it. So there's lots of things for everybody there. So please come take a gander and help us raise money for the Marvell Coffee Breast Center at Mount Sinai, and also the Rose of Sharon Services for Young Women in Newmarket. Without further ado, I would like to pass on to Caitlin and welcome our vendors and stockist, Katie, to the stage. I hope everyone's having a great time today. I know I am. It's so much fun to connect with everybody and see what's new for 2019. So, I, as Pam said, am Caitlin from Streets Ahead Style and I will let everybody introduce themselves. So, we have a mic this year so everyone gets to introduce themselves and talk just briefly about their brand or their business. Does anyone know how to beatbox? 
Um, I'm Sammy from Cuter Cuticles, the smelliest table on the way in, uh, and this is my third in the expo. I'm Sarah from uh, Bees Knees, and so this is our second time here. You can see uh, Mr. Bees Knees with the bright green hair, so that we stand out. It's easy to find us, for sure. Yeah. Closer. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, my name is Maggie, and I'm from Cleona, and the DH is silent. Cleona. <laughs> I'm Jenna from Limby Designs. Um, this is my first time in Canada ever. <laughs> okay, so. Let's start off by asking, what does indie mean to you? Indie means to me uh, like a whole slew of badass business women who do this every day on their own time and their own dime. And it means it means supporting someone living their dream. That's what indie means to me. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. <laughs> like, there's a lot of really badass brands, but um, it's really hard because you're doing it on your own so every purchase goes to like us having a vacation or spending time with family or all of that really important stuff so indie is like really personal I think for me too. I could definitely agree um, with the personal aspect of it and I also feel uh, that indie to me is very like in an intimate thing in a way that it's more personal with my customers. You're not just a number. Um, I, we care about you and your experience with our brand, and just our attention to our products. We don't, you know, all of us here don't just pump them through a machine. Everything is small batch and quality checked, and we pay a lot of attention to that. Um, everything they've said. But for me, Indy was an opportunity. Growing up in a town where you have like sawmill jobs and that's it um, really limits what you can do. So it was a great opportunity for me to start my own business. Yeah, I was actually going to ask what inspired you to start your own business? Um, we had one store. And I owned all of the nail polish in said store. <laughs> so I got busy frankening, and then I was like, I could do this. And then I did it. And that was eight years ago. Hi, I'm Katie. Um, I own Harlan Co. Um, and yeah, what inspired you to start your own business? Um, well, for me, it was like, <laughs> and then I started mixing my own batches and put up an Etsy site and then I sold stuff and suddenly eight years later I'm doing conventions. Um, so for those of you who don't know, I run from Cleona with my sister Lee. Um, we both graduated uh, the same year. She finished with a degree in graphic design and I finished a Bachelor of Science. And so we kind of thought, you know, we buy so much makeup, we buy a lot of any makeup from the States and we pay, you know, shipping and conversion and all that stuff. Um, we could do this. You have the, the background for the website, I can do the chemistry part. And so we kind of just like jumped like head first into it really. Um, thought it might be more of a hobby. And then it just turned into more than that and we've just been trying to keep going. Um, yeah, so I was a grad student at Ohio and then life kind of like, oh yeah, okay, sorry. Um, I was a, getting my PhD actually in biology and then um, life was like, no, you're not going to be able to do that anymore. So then suddenly all the stuff like I've been training for, 
I couldn't do. So then I took a stint teaching, and then while I was teaching, I was like, you know what? I buy a lot of nail polish, so like, let's try it. And um, it was actually my dad who like who really encouraged it. Who really like he even named the company. He came up with these knees. That was not me. That was my dad. I'll admit it. And um, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Dad. And so like he gave me lots of encouragement, and then it's been a family thing ever since. Like my sister works there. She does the same sort of thing, and my husband does all the uh, website graphic design. So it's been like it's been a really nice uh, family thing we have going. Yeah, me too. I a couple of years ago started getting into um, nail art. You know, thought I was brilliant, but. I was using a lot of acetone and I was looking for a cuticle oil that would be good and there were some in the market that are popular, but they only had like two cents. And I thought, you know, I looked at the ingredient list and said, I could probably do that. And then I made some for me and then I made some for my friends and then people said I would buy that. And then I used all the money that I earned from Cuter Cuticles to buy all the polishes so I wouldn't feel bad. And then at some point, I realized that I probably shouldn't spend that kind of money on polishes and hobbies, and maybe I had a business going. And so it's become the thing it is today, but it really kind of took off on its own. Uh, and that's how that happened for me. So what would you say has been your favorite moment since launching your brand? And are there any achievements in particular that make you feel very proud or excited? Oh, no pressure. <laughs> um, I love things like this. I love, you know what? I say it every time in every interview, and I'm not tired of saying it. I love my customers, my cuties. It's not just something I say, it means a ton to me. Um, when they see me places and they hug me and they want to take pictures and they want to know how I'm doing and they want to know what my life is like and they want to buy my products. And, and so I think that. The connection that I've made with them is one of the things that I'm most proud of and it's kind of you know filtered out into the world we have get-togethers where we go out for meals and we become like a little local family and friends so I kind of love that oh man, this question is hard. I know so um, I guess like for me I'm just really like the best moment is when you you're at these things and you meet someone and they're like, oh my god, your stuff, what it, like, it brightens my day or you hear something like that. Like, that for me is definitely the best moments that you get out of this because you get to know, like, you really do connect with the customers, like Sammy said, and like, um, it's not just, you're just making nail polish, like, you can have an impact on someone and I think that's really, that's really an amazing feeling. I can definitely agree with the connections that we make. Um, if I were to put a single point in time of one of the proudest moments, I would say it would be when, uh, recently, maybe a month ago, when Lee was able to fully quit her job. Um, I had quit about a year ago to work on this, and Lee finally did. Um, so I'm just really proud to be able to have something that is, I guess, sustaining for us. <laughs> and just to work with my sibling and have this just be the two of us really and we do have a third employee which is actually my boyfriend's sister so it really is a family thing and being able to support us is kind of a really proud <laughs> moment for, overall for us um in addition to meeting people here which when people come up to me and introduce themselves and say, oh, I love your brain. It fills my little introverted heart with joy because I'm not gonna come up to you. It's just a simple fact. Um, but a more personal note, I've been able to go debt free, which is huge because of indie polish and I never thought that would have been possible. well um yeah making connections with customers is really i i honestly think it's the best part um aside from getting that little notification saying that you got a sale um yeah right <laughs> it's awesome because you know everyone's no, people want to spend their hard-earned money on stuff that you're selling and that's really cool 
Um, yeah, um, as for something super important, uh, I don't know. I think it was when I quit my full-time job to do Harlow full-time. Um, that was probably my biggest achievement, or what I'm most proud of, I guess. Um, so it could be self-sustaining. Yeah, I don't know. Um, oh, also, having an exclusive polish with picture polish was pretty exciting for me as well. So. <laughs> Also, Cleona was recently featured, but so Shane Dawson on YouTube like displayed their stuff. That's a huge deal. It's a huge deal. That is super awesome. It's like when indie goes mainstream, kind of. But we're, yeah, it's amazing. So maybe that would be interesting for you to speak on. Just how did an experience like that change your business? Like. Has it really, how has that shifted just recently? We have two mics, yay! <laughs> All right, so for those of you who are lost, um, <laughs> Sam <laughs> was saying that Shane Dawson had reached out to us um, and we sent him a package and so he had created a story on Instagram, which was like a 24 hour thing. Um, and in one day, I think we grew 40,000 followers. Um, so with that comes a lot of different things, you know, being in the indie community, community, I think most of us are used to our customers understanding that these are handmade and the time, the effort, small batch, you know, we don't have low costs of production. So having a whole slew of people come in not knowing any of this really and thinking that we have a lot more people or that why are our prices this and whatnot. It's been a little bit um, rewarding and trying at the same time, I guess. Um, so it's, you get some po a lot of positivity, most positivity, and then some negativity as well that is just a different side of the internet. But that's okay because honestly, the positivity really does outweigh that. And I think for us, the biggest thing is just to really drive that communication of look, we're handmade, like every shadow is done one by one right now. And we're at this point, even before Shane actually talked about us, that we've been looking for warehouse space and to get more employees. So it's really driven home that we need to do that faster, I guess, so that we can meet these expectations that people are holding. So on that, I was actually going to ask, it's a little negative, but what would you say is the biggest stressor for, for each of you in your work? Yeah, just making sure I meet the customer's expectations is like the stressor in every version of that. So is the product what I promised them? Is the packaging holding up? Am I getting things out to them in time? Am I meeting the promises and expectations that I made to them? And while I, we all, I'm sure, intend to do that from the get-go, you know, it's it's very stressful when things don't go properly and you have to find a way to still make it happen for them because really, um, the personal level is that much more when it's someone giving you personally their money, which is how they feel, and then you personally feeling a commitment to them, and knowing that you you have the potential to let them down is just super stressful. Yeah, it, that is very stressful. And then for me, like adding in the time factor, so do you have enough time in the day to actually fulfill all of those demands and like the promises you made so uh, <laughs> in my house I'm, it's well known that I'll be up till like four in the morning working on stuff answering emails Facebook all of that like it is a lot of time like it's a big time commitment so it stresses me a lot like there will be days where I'm like I don't have enough time in the day and then you feel bad pushing something off and so yeah number one stressor Yeah, stressors, um, definitely what you guys are saying. Um, balancing your work and personal lives can be very difficult. Um, as you were just saying, you feel like there's not enough time in a day sometimes, and if an order's late, then you know you, you have to get it out, and well, but wait, I have these plans with friends for dinner, and how do I choose? And sometimes it's a matter of just, 
at least with Lee and I, we'll book like stuff months in advance with friends and be like, I know that in one month from now, I have this dinner I have to go to, so no matter what, I'm cutting myself off at 7 p.m. tonight, and I just have to not beat myself up over it. Because at the end of the day, we can beat ourselves up as much as we want, but that's not going to help our business at all. Um, yeah, all of those things. For me personally, it's just figuring out the balance between working as much as I can, but then making sure I have weekends off because that it just de-stresses me to have that free time on the weekends. And but if I have orders like I do now, um, when I get back from Canada, I have 35 orders to fill. So there's some stress there. <laughs> But it'll just, you have to, it's all time management. And it, it can be really fulfilling to get a bunch done in one day, but then the next day, nothing happens. Um, so yeah, I would say basically what everyone else said. Um, however, I find um, with me, a stressor um, is bookkeeping. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> <laughs> Pam shaking her head, yes. <laughs> that is one of the things. And um, I believe, like, in the first few years, I tried to do it myself um, because I had a background in accounting. Um, so it got to a point where I was putting things off and putting things off, and then I finally decided to just hire somebody. And that was probably the best thing that I could do, um, obviously, to relieve that kind of stress. Um, but yeah, and uh, the other stressor I do experience um, is either buying not enough stock or um, buying too little or too much, basically. Um, I think that most of everyone on the panel is a maker. Um, I'm a stockist, so I don't actually make anything. I'm basically just stocking other people's stuff. Um, but yeah, so I, yeah, <laughs> having too much of something tough, but yeah, I know. So if everyone um, would be interested in answering the question, how has the indie world changed since you launched your brand or your business? Um, I think it's become more saturated. Um, there's like a ton more brands out like there. I think, um, I don't want to say it's going mainstream, but it's really nice, like especially with the Shane Dawson thing, to see um, them promoting an indie brand over um, just like a mainstream cosmetics brand. Um, so that's been, I don't know, really cool about the indie world. <laughs> um, when I started out, there were a handful of makers, and it was basically throw some glitter in a polish, sell it, and you sold tons of them because there was nothing like it. Nowadays, it's searching for the newest pigments, the newest finishes, and even then, you know, you can think that you have a really great product and you'll launch it and you'll sell three because the week before, someone launched something super similar. So the oversaturation can just cause too much competition, but then also, in some ways, not enough competition. So I think that I'm in a little bit of a different indie world, being on the cosmetic side of it, and I think that's a little bit behind the nail polish world. Um, when I started, there was already, so three years ago now, there were already a number of indie polish makers, but there were really not many indie cosmetic makers. Um, I could probably honestly count on like my one hand. The Rainbow Highlighter, Bitter Lace Beauty, exactly. Like that might have been the only one, you know, and like a few others. Um, since then, it's definitely become more saturated trend. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's, it's become more saturated. And I think that there's been a change in the general cosmetic industry that people are starting to realize that indie, a lot of the times can have superior quality. And we've noticed a lot more uh, more customers coming from the mainstream, you know, ABHs and whatnot, and trying indie cosmetics and being like, wow, like this pigment is incredible because we're not filling it with 70% fillers, right? Um, and so I think that's 
kind of the biggest change, at least from my perspective. Yeah, so we have only been around, like we're coming up on our second year, and even in those two years, the, like, the, like everyone else said, oversaturation is one of the biggest changes. Like there, it feels like every day I'm on Instagram and I see a brand I've never seen before, and I'm like, okay, well, and I mean, there's just nothing you can do about it. You just have to figure out how to adapt, like uh, Jenna said, and find the next the best pigment and the new thing that's going to um, appeal to everyone. So, Yeah, so there's a lot more of us doing this thing and that's absolutely true. I think I was one of the few really indie cuticle makers. There were some boutique makers like Bliss Kiss um, and now it seems like everyone has a cuticle oil and I guess you just keep doing what you're doing. You've been successful this far and just keep keep enjoying it, keep putting it out into the world, and, and people will buy what you sell. Um, but for me, I think the thing that's changed the most is how how I sell things. So back when I started, it was an Instagram kind of thing, and we all had you know Etsy shops, and that's how things got sold. But now we're doing events like this uh, across all of North America. There's a whole bunch of these. And Polish Pickup, it's a beast, and it really has changed my business significantly. So that has changed, and I'm sure is affecting more people than just myself. So I want to give some time for people to ask questions if anyone has them in the audience, but can everyone give us a sneak peek or teaser of something that's coming up, maybe from their brand, anything new, if you want to share, uh, you look forward to? No. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I kind of feel that same way because I don't want to jinx anything, but like, um, I have hope that there are big things for bees knees coming in the future, but I'm not gonna jinx it because I'm apparently very superstitious as I sit here, I realize that. <laughs> Alright, I'll give you something. <laughs> um, it's not the next thing coming, so you won't actually know when it's coming though. But we were able to travel to Hawaii to take some shots of a product that's upcoming. Yeah. She's <laughs> Um, I really like to just take my company one month at a time. So I'm really excited about my September collection, which is based on Urban Legends, which coincides with October's Polish pickup theme. But um. I love urban legends and conspiracy theories, and I'm, I'm a huge nut for that type of thing. So I'm really excited about the urban legends collection. I can't actually say anything. <laughs> the new collection's coming out. Um, but I've had at least three brands um, send me emails about new collections coming out in the end of August, early of September, so save your money. <laughs> They just spent it all here. No. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions from the audience? I do. Yeah. <laughs> can you, you can project your voice. Shocking, right? I'm going to turn this way now so that people can hear. Okay, so um, I'm finding that since indie brands started, can you guys hear me? Okay. So since indie brands started, back when I started, 2011, nobody really knew what indie brand was, especially when it came to nail polish, right? People knew indie music. They knew indie um, hand and like soap and, and body care, but they didn't know what indie polish was. So I feel like people understand indie business as a whole now a lot better than they did years ago. So my question for you is, I have a couple of them. Do you have someone in your family that you learned any of your business strategies from? And are they somebody that can guide you or that you can brainstorm with? Or are you kind of on your own in this business? Um, I lean on my husband a lot. Um, he does um, all the graphic design. Um, uh, he helps me with the website, but um, I don't really have anyone else that I've leaned on for anything else. I've kind of done it all myself. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> um, for me, it's my parents. Um, they 
ran a restaurant when I was a little kid, then they ran a jewelry store, and my dad sold on eBay for close to a decade. And through those experiences, I've gotten this entrepreneurial bug that I can't get rid of, and they're still there to guide me and help me with shipping and everything, and <laughs> manning my booth while I'm doing panels. But, um, so yeah, I've, it's like I was born to be an entrepreneur, and from the age of seven, I was like, I'm gonna be an artist, but I can't draw or paint. So, I'm like, so I make nail polish. See, it's wearable works of art. And my parents, you know, they brainstorm with me, and then my brother comes over, he's like, what are you doing? Like, you wouldn't understand. You don't get it. <laughs> What was the question? <laughs> Do totally. you have anybody in your family that you learned your business strategies from? Right. And you I was paying attention. Oh, okay. so short term memory issues. Okay, oh, me too. <laughs> I had to read it. Um, the answer to that would just be no. Honestly, we learn by making mistakes. Lee and I, Brittany is her first name. I call her Brittany, but Brittany Lee, that's fine. Um, yeah, Brittany and I, we don't have a background in business, economics, anything. We just fall flat on our face, make mistakes, get up and learn. Um, and I'm just lucky that I have my sister in this so that when I do make these mistakes, I can get up a lot faster. I thought you were gonna say blame her. <laughs> no, I want the runner in there. No, that's, that's what I have my family for, is to blame her. No, I'm kidding, they're amazing. Um, my dad was really, like I said, he was really involved, and so he thought he knew how to run an indie business. But it's very different from the insurance business he has. So we butted heads constantly. He thought our pricing was wrong. It had to be 9.95. So everyone thought they got a deal. He still tells me this. Like, before we left. So yeah, we butt heads. So no, I don't take that advice from him. But other stuff where he's like, how to do your taxes, I'll take that any day because that, that I can't do but no um, otherwise I lean on uh, my husband and my sister to help they bounce ideas off they may not always have the best ideas and sometimes they have amazing ideas it's just I don't either so um, yeah but my dad sometimes <laughs> I've heard that before that if, if it's not a rounded dollar that people think they're getting a discount or yeah there's some like rule that if it if Walmart's selling it for 98 cents and it's expired or something like that yeah I know where that comes from um, no nobody in my family ever ran a business or had the acumen to do so they were all very hard-working people but they work for other people um, and I guess just I'm a, a project manager business analyst in my day job so I guess that helped a lot and then I, um, I rely heavily on my husband Mr. Sammy who's back there um, running the table he does the, the website and he actually designed my logo because I was looking at clip art online and he said you're not using clip art <laughs> I'll do something. Um, and then just luckily having been around as long as I, I am I kind of ask for help with people from people who I know can give it I know I've asked Pam a few questions along the way and now people ask me questions so uh, we rely on each other but no nobody in my family ran businesses nor helped me today with that okay. did you have any other questions Pam? I do just one just one so recently we've seen a huge surge in the YouTube beauty gurus launching indie brands which are vastly different from our type of indie brands so I don't know that customers that are not already our customers are going to be able to differentiate that. Do you think that what's happening with the YouTube beauty, what? <laughs> YouTube beauty guru indie brand movement is going to hurt or help our type of brands? 
Yeah, uh, so probably doesn't, probably doesn't touch my business yet. Thankfully, no beauty guru, no Kathleen Lights cuticle oil yet. But, <laughs> no Shane Dawson, uh, barrier butter. So I'm gonna pass it on just, I myself am very influenced by those YouTube beauty gurus. I squealed when I saw Cleona on Shane Dawson's account, so I yeah. can't imagine how they wouldn't impact us. I'm just interested, like you, to see how it'll go. Yeah. I don't know. I guess we'll see. Like time, time will definitely tell how how it will impact. But I think those beauty gurus can easily like like what happened with, uh, with Shane Dawson. Like you'll, can launch your business easily. So I think that they could have either a really good positive benefit, or if they hate your stuff, that could be a big downside. But hopefully that doesn't. Yeah, so I think the, the question's almost twofold. Um, one in that what you were touching based on, if a large influencer speaks about your brand, then you can get you know so much traffic coming in. Um, but then on the other side of it, which Pam was saying that they're starting companies of their own that are indie. Um, and so for us, I think that it's pretty impactful because when people think indie, they're like, okay, well, independently owned. It's you know not Sephora brand or you know, no umbrella company. Um, so you're all the same. And it's like, to us, no, we're not the same. We didn't start with this crazy amount of capital and we don't have a lab already doing our stuff and whatnot. Like we are indie handmade. And that's what we like to differentiate is that we're not made over in China where there's people just pumping out the products and we just give them a large investment off the start and then boom, there's a pallet to launch my brand. Um, it's literally ground up from Canada and so we always just try and make sure that people understand that we are handmade here and with the recent traction that we've gotten, we definitely have noticed some comments being like, oh well just stick with this brand, they're indie and it's like, yeah, they are, but but are they? So it, it just depends really what you consider indie or not, I guess. <laughs> I'm obsessed with YouTube. Um, we'll just put that out there. So when a certain um, former nail polish channel decided to launch their own brand, um, there was some <laughs> backlash. And one of her toppers has some curling flakies in it. And I feel that she's permeated her market so much with these top coats that it's going to affect the general indie opinion of what flakies will do. And if you were in the workshops yesterday, the flakies that we used were not the same flakies that she uses. And so that kind of bothers me when, yes, she owns the business, but she also put hundreds of thousands of dollars into developing three colors. Well, okay, so two colors, three towers. So it's still just a drastically different thing. So yes, it's great to get the indie name out there. Maybe, you know, I'll be able to go to a local crafts show and people will be like, you make nail polish? That's so cool. Instead of, you make nail polish? How? Like, do you make the base? You have to be a like chemist to do that. I put colors in base. I create colors. Like, I can do that. <laughs> so, it's there are two vastly different ideas of indie, and I would like to think that the YouTubers are bringing more attention to the thing of being an indie brand, but they're really not because they're not actually making the products. The closest I can think is um, Tati Westbrook's Vitamin Light, which is drastically different than anything that we do. But she's researched and she's so hands-on and she's put in millions of dollars into developing vitamins that she thoroughly tests on herself. I think that that's different than you know, Kathleen Lights having nail polish made by a different company or any of the other indie brands on YouTube. Um, so everyone's basically said what I would have said. <laughs> um, I will say that um, this unnamed uh, YouTube former nail artist 
uh, when she did launch her brand, it sold out um, so so quickly, so quickly. <laughs> um, and I did notice myself there was an uptick in holographic top coat sales after that. So whether people are looking for less expensive dupes for um, the more expensive, <laughs> I guess, yeah, YouTuber brands. Um, so that's helpful, I guess. Um, same with kale polish. Um, I find a lot of the times um, I get traffic from uh, Reddit forums looking for dupes of kale polish because it's not available here in Canada um, and people want those colors. So I guess, I don't know, it's kind of a double-edged sword. I don't know. <laughs> They're not technically indie, but they are kind of driving um, a small uptick in sales, whether it's for dupes or um, just trying to get the same effect for a less expensive price. <laughs> Does anyone else have any other questions from the audience? Okay, well thank you to everybody for sharing your experiences. It's really awesome to hear that perspective. And uh, yeah, thank you for coming and hope everybody, oh yes, yes. Uh, I have one for Caitlin. How has the blogging world changed since you started? That's a good question, so. I mean, I feel like, I don't know how deep everybody is into Facebook, but um, it definitely has changed in terms of the demands on bloggers, I would say, and this sort of came up last year too, so in the past it would be a brand would put out, an indie brand would put out a collection spring, fall, summer, winter, and it would just sort of be six or seven polishes, you swatch them, but now, as someone also mentioned, with polish pickup, with hella handmade creations, with any other things that are sort of popping up it's like you gotta polish in the pictures you need three days later so the demand has definitely changed and there's definitely a lot more content to be blogging about for sure and i would also say that even in the past month specifically with the polish pickup i've noticed that everybody expects a live swatch video now of a polish so i just started using my camera phone and i've got it like set up on a little Bath and Body Works candle and I don't even have a stand and I'm like, I guess people want this so I, I should try to sort of start adapting to that and of course you can't be an expert at everything but it's starting to feel that way but and it almost feels like maybe there's an expectation that you should not just have pictures but you should also have a swatch video and you should have a, a video of the nail polish in different lighting so you can see it whereas in the past it was good enough to just have one picture or something so I would say it's, it's definitely changed but um there are also so many more bloggers out there on Instagram for sure. Instagram, um, it's micro-blogging, but I know that it's really useful for brands to actually have a blog with a URL because Google is still such a huge source of traffic. So um, if you want to talk to me about blogging, you can. But I know that the auction is also closing soon, so I want to make sure everybody has time to go and, and make a final bid. And also on behalf of Rosa Sharon, I work there. I've worked there for the past three years. It's an incredible organization. I see the work that the organization does firsthand for young moms under 25. They can finish high school. They can have their kid with them in the classroom. And it's just an amazing place. And um, yeah, so thank you for supporting that. and. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> thank you, Caitlin. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you. <laughs>